So guys, I am back with yet another Throne and Liberty video and I am back from my two week holiday. So the videos you've seen in the past two weeks from me have all been scheduled and it was just my luck getting to my holiday destination and they dropped that massive Halloween update which is basically content I completely missed so I apologize about not uploading any content in regards to the Halloween stuff. But now I am back and literally guys, the first post they dropped since I arrived back was talking about the loot distribution rules. And man oh man, this completely changes the way I look at this game. And I actually think it's bad news for certain players, i.e. tanks, but today we'll get into it all. So over the past two weeks, because I've been away, I haven't been picking winners for my Lucent giveaways, but I did say when I returned, I'll go over the videos that I posted as scheduled videos and pick out multiple winners. So if you have been supporting what I've been doing while I've been away and you see yourself on screen now, hit me up via the Discord link down below to claim that Lucent people. I do really appreciate your support. But also guys, I am giving away again 1000 plus Lucent to one lucky person and to win it's as simple as this drop a like on this video leave me a comment down below and make sure you are subbed i'll pick one winner from the comment section and announce them towards the end of the week so good luck everybody okay so loot distribution rules now i've had a little bit of a read of this early on this morning and what i did read didn't fill me with confidence i'm not gonna lie some of the rules here don't make much sense to me but let's get through it Anyway, and leave me your opinions down below. Okay, so they tweeted like this. Conquer, devour us field bosses, courageously explore abyss dungeons, and more in pursuit of Silesium's greatest treasures. Before we dive into loot rules, you'll first need to understand contributions and event items. Contribution. Contribution is earned by doing damage against the enemy and healing friendly players in battle while said enemy is active. Contribution from healing is acquired for healing players both in and out of your party when participating in guild level events, i.e. field bosses. Okay, so that's very, very interesting. Uh, so yes, everybody else who's doing damage is basically taking part in that contribution but with a healer it comes down to having healing players in and around your party which makes sense now when as soon as i read this i thought well what about tanks what about people who have created builds purposely to tank damage while others lay down that damage what about them but we'll get more into that in a quick second okay so event items loot drop during dynamic events that is collected to turn in for event progress for example wolf tails in the wolf hunting event i guess we all knew what event items were people here's an overview of loot distribution by activity so general activities open world farming basically abyss dungeon farming quests contracts dynamic events co-op dungeons excluding the final reward chest applicable enemies normal elite and party elite so distribution rules here when an enemy dies, loot is assigned to the player who first earned contribution. Doubt damage in this case to said enemy. Okay, so yes, basically guys, the first person to hit an enemy gets that contribution. So for solo players, it's probably important to try and hit an enemy first. Uh, if the player is in a group, the loot is assigned to the player's party instead. Okay, that makes sense. In this case, the drops from the enemy have equal chance of distribution across all party members. The only exception is party members that have no contribution and are out of range will be excluded from that drop pool. Okay, so that does make sense. But what is that range? They don't actually drop specifics here. And we notice that further on with this post. We need specifics. People, we really do. All items are evenly distributed when possible. This means if there are 10 items dropped for a party of 5, each player should receive 2 items. If even distribution is not possible, it will randomly select uh, players to receive an extra drop or drops. Now this does make sense to me. Uh, I've seen this instance numerous times and the fact that it seems though players get an equal balance of drops and then sometimes it seems as though uh, certain players will receive more than others but again we need specifics on exactly what enemy and where 
even they state themselves this distribution is not possible where this actually happens what enemy this happens with a uh, soul and an experience are distributed evenly okay so that's cool okay so peace mode bosses and guild raids explicable enemies field bosses and arch bosses okay so field bosses are more or less the world bosses like murakai excavator 9 Talus, etc, etc. Arch bosses, guys, are the weekly bosses. We have, I believe at the moment, we have Balandir and the Tevent. Tevent is a guy who actually made a video on Capone 3 of the endgame bowls. And at the time I made that video and posted it while I was away, they actually put Tevent in the game where he could actually earn said bow. Okay, so the distribution rules here. When a peace mode field boss dies, all players are sorted by individual player contribution. A guild's overall contribution does not play a role for peace mode bosses and guild raids. I did not know that whatsoever. I actually thought if you're in a party, uh, the more damage that party accumulates as a whole will actually contribute. Well, now we know it's the complete opposite and this is not the actual case. Okay, so players must meet a minimum contribution to be eligible to receive loot from the bus. Okay, so that does kind of make sense considering how many people do actually fight these bosses at one time. I'd love to see the actual contribution number, the minimum contribution number, but I guess it does go on the fact that depending on how many people are actually fighting them, it's probably the top 50 maybe, top 100 of doing the most damage. Or it would be interesting to know if there's a specific target players need to meet to be added into that pool where specific loot could be rewarded. I mean, again, guys, we need more specifics here. And again, going back to that tank. If you're a tank, guys, and your build is based around tanking damage from bosses so other players can indeed lay down that damage, this, to me, completely throws me off the idea of ever wanting to create a tank because at the end of the day guys when it comes to getting some of the best loot in the game you're already at a disadvantage because we see here guys the loot rules for this game are more or less down to actually dealing damage and although tanks can deal some hefty damage for the most part guys their job is to tank which takes them out of the equation of ever being able to contribute enough in order to receive specific loot some of the best loot this game does indeed drop which does not make sense to me if i'm a new player coming into this game and you'd like to create tanks you like to build tanks this would completely put me off that idea it really would and as a whole this does not make sense to me the way they've gone about incorporating such a system into this game surely they know within an mmo this big of this scale People are going to want to make tanks when the option is there. This completely goes against the idea of ever creating a tank, in my opinion. Let me know your thoughts down below, guys, especially if you are a tank. Okay, so there are two drop types that come from peace mode bosses. Contribution drops. Each item is distributed based on chance according to individual contribution. Again, this makes sense with dealing damage and healing, but what about a tank? Random drops. Each item is randomly provided only to remaining players who did not receive one of the contribution drops. So if you're a tank, guys, and you ain't based around doing massive amounts of damage, your only real chance here of getting specific loot is at a random chance, which, again, guys, doesn't fill me with much confidence. A single player is only eligible to receive one of these drops. In other words, a single player cannot receive more than one epic equipment item from a single boss in counter. Okay, so that kind of does make sense. But either or guys, again, tanks seem to have been forgotten about. Solent and experience are distributed evenly. Cool. So they drop an example here. Let's assume that a field boss drops the following loot when defeated. Contribution drops, one sword, one mask, and 1,000 solent. Random drops, boots. Assuming you've met the minimum contribution requirement described above, if your contribution was 3% of the total contribution, you would have a 3% chance of acquiring either the sword or the mask. All players that meet the minimum contribution requirement would have an equal chance to acquire the boots, regardless of total contribution. Any player who receives epic equipment is unable to attain a second piece of epic equipment from the same boss 
kill. So that does make sense. I mean, yes, we all know that the chances are going to be pretty low anyway. But I do appreciate the extra detail here in regards to percentage chances. But you've all guys, the amount of players that have actually taken part in these uh, boss events, your chances are still going to be pretty slim, no matter your contribution levels. Okay, so conflict mode bosses. Applicable enemies here are field bosses and arch enemies. Distribution rules. Loot is assigned in two stage process. First, loot is assigned to a guild. Then the loot is assigned to players within that guild. When a field boss dies during conflict mode, a guild's contribution is calculated as the sum of the individual contribution for each player in the guild who participated in the fight. The guilds are then sorted based on contribution. Guilds must meet a minimum contribution to be eligible to receive loot from the boss. Loot items are distributed based on chance according to guild contribution. Note, unlike peace mode bosses, dying to an enemy or another player during a conflict mode boss will result in the dying player losing 70% of their overall contribution, meaning it reduces the guild's total contribution at the end of the match. Once a guild has been assigned an item, all participating players within the guild have an equal chance to obtain the item. Stolen and experience are distributed evenly. And they drop an example here. Let's assume that a field boss drops the following loot when defeated. Drops one sword, one mask and a thousand solent. If players A, B and C have 10%, 15% and 20% contribution respectively and all belong to the same guild, then the guild's contribution will be 45%. That means this guild will have a 45% chance to acquire the sword and mask. If the guild successfully acquired the mask, then players A, B and C would each have an equal chance to receive that mask. So that makes sense there. They go on to say guys, claim the throne in the next castle siege to ensure you almost never have to worry about valuable loot again. Thanks for your support and we'll see you in Silesium. Now what I will say is obviously tanks have got the short end of the stick here and I really don't understand the thinking the devs have actually put in place in regards to the loot rules and yes I do know people will be staying there's always that random chance or if you're in a guild but at the end of the day guys tanks are tanks they never deal the most damage so they're already at a disadvantage so we do need a further update in regards to how it's beneficial for tanks to earn loot in this game in regards to uh, contribution factors because again guys it seems as though they've been forgotten about in regards to loot distribution rules but that's just my opinion guys let me know yours down below but guys i am back expect more throne and liberty videos i got a lot of catching up to do i'm also playing cut at the same time so yeah although things are a little slow in regards to creating content for this game i will still make a video here and there that's for sure guys if you enjoyed the video leaving a like really helps out if you like what you see and want to see more be sure to subscribe and hopefully guys i will see you on that next one